Look, we need to have a talk about Twitter because uh, the other day I tweeted something out. I said, little piece of advice for streamers and creators new to cameras. That's the context. The most important part of the camera isn't actually the camera, it's the lens you put in front of it, which is true. And I got like 20 responses to that tweet, all saying, oh, oh, well actually it's the person you put in front of the camera. Is that person a part of the camera? No, this tweet was for people trying to buy cameras. If you go into a camera store and the employee says, actually the most important part is the person you put in front of the camera, go to a different camera store. It's not clever, it's not helpful, all right, it's annoying. We're gonna talk about lenses in this video, and if someone puts in the comments, oh, what about the person in front of the camera? I want, because it's gonna happen now. You all need to rally together and downvote those comments, because that's annoying. Let's, let's talk about lenses. <laughs> Rant over. The goal of this video is that by the end of it, you understand which kind of lenses give certain looks, how to find a lens that will give you that specific look that you're looking for, and then of course, uh, how to save some money. Make sure you're not overpaying for certain features that you're just not gonna need. Let's get into it. By the way, huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Owned.TV, your one-stop shop for all your stream aesthetic needs. If you're looking to make your stream look pretty with overlays, alerts, camera borders, panels, anything that you need, Owned.TV has you covered. They've got a whole store full of modular stream designs. For example, if you and all of your friends pick this Rodan overlay, none of you are gonna have the same one. You can choose different camera borders, different elements to really give your stream a unique style. So, if you wanna make the smart move like many from the community have today, use the link in the description below to support the channel and go pick up something from Owned.TV and make sure you use code alpha at checkout and get 40% off. Also, if you have any questions about lenses, uh, feel free to jump into my stream, twitch.tv slash Harris Heller. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. And uh, usually my voice is a little stronger than this, but I just got home from PAX late last night. So anyway, let's jump into the video. Hey man, what lens you got there? Oh, this one? It's the uh, 16 to 35. Is it the F4 or the 2.8? Ah, oh, but you know it's the 2.8. No. Oh. Oh. You guys are annoying. 16 to 35 millimeter. F2.8. These are the two real identifying numbers of a lens. Let's talk about what they mean. Let's focus on the first one, 16 to 35 millimeter. This is called the focal length, and in simplest terms, uh, it explains how wide the shot is or how zoomed in it is. The lower the number, the wider the shot. The higher the number, the more it's zoomed in. Zoom. It feels weird to me that zoom is like an actual professional term. It feels like going to a car mechanic and having them be like, horsepower is the amount of kablammy an engine has. Anyway, zoom. My main camera on my stream is a 14 millimeter lens, which is a very wide lens for a full frame sensor. Speaking of which, that's important. We'll get to that in a little bit. It's also a prime lens, which means it doesn't zoom. It's 14 millimeters. It will always be 14 millimeters. My second stream camera, which you can see right there, is running a 24 to 70 millimeter, means it starts as wide as 24 and then it zooms all the way into 70 millimeters. Now there's a secret to focal length that a lot of new camera users don't know. It's about much more than just how close do I want to get to my subject, how zoomed in do I want to get? Because the higher the focal length, the more shallow your depth of field is, or the more pronounced that background blur or bokeh is. So you take a look at this, as the focal length becomes higher, the background becomes much more blurry. This is why when I'm on my intermission screen and I'm using that 14 millimeter super wide lens, the entire room is pretty much in focus. There's very little blur behind me. But on my gameplay camera, the second one I mentioned right here, I have that lens zoomed into about 35 millimeters and you'll notice that behind me, there's a much more pronounced bokeh. It's, it's like that silky fluffy background look. It's nice, huh? I love using both of those extremes on my stream. The super wide on my intermission screen and the super blurry background on my gameplay screen. It's almost like jarring, but in like a, in a beautiful way, you know? Let's bring back up the numbers of this lens right here real quick. Let's talk about the second one now. This one is called the Aperture. Let me actually just show you what Aperture does. You can see this is my 14 mil lens. See that? See what's going on there? So the lower the number is, the wider open it gets. So this is 2.8. I can close it all the way down to 22. 2.8, 22, 2.8. When you open up an aperture, pretty amazing things happen. Opening up the aperture as wide as possible causes the background to get even blurrier. And on top of that, the wider your lens opens up, the more light 
you're letting in and the less you have to digitally brighten your image later. Oftentimes something that happens is you're working with a lens that doesn't have a super wide aperture. Maybe the widest it can get is like f4, right? You can't open it all the way up to the 2.8 or 1.4 some lenses have. You have to compensate for this lack of light by boosting up the ISO, which is basically the digital brightness. And when you do that, you start introducing a lot of noise. A lens that can open up wider is gonna solve that problem for you. It's also gonna be more expensive. Just a heads up. By the way, the number listed on the lens refers to the widest open it can get. So there is an F4 version of this lens. This lens can do everything that the F4 can do, plus open up an additional stop to 2.8. And if you get like an F1.4, it can do everything this can do, but then also hit F2 and F1.4. So that number tells you the lowest that aperture can get, or the widest open it gets. You following? We good? Cool. By the way, pro note for anyone planning on getting into photography, as you start to get into those super low apertures, like 1.4 or below, you start to lose a little bit of the crispness in your foreground, the person that's in focus. However, if you're vlogging or streaming, it's not a noticeable difference. So let's buy you a lens. Let's say you like my 35 mil shot that I've got on my second camera. You wanna go out and buy a 35 mil for your Sony A5100, right? The last thing that is super important when it comes to you deciding on what lens you wanna get. Uh, do you remember a little bit ago when I mentioned the sensor size and then I said we'll talk about it a little bit later? Yeah, let's talk about that now. The sensor is the part of the camera that the light actually lands on after going through your lens. So it's basically like the, the film of the digital cameras. And there are three main sizes that you're gonna be dealing with. Full frame sensor, which is the biggest, then APS-C, which is also called a crop sensor, and micro four thirds, which is the smallest. As the sensor gets smaller, it crops the image coming through the lens. So if you're using a 35 millimeter on a full frame and then you put it on a crop sensor, it'll look more like a 55 millimeter shot. And if you put it on a micro four thirds sensor, it'll look like a 70 millimeter shot. Important note, by the way, it will still have the same background blur of a 35 mil. So it's not like you're zooming in the lens and getting that shallow depth of field, you're still only getting the benefits of 35 mil, you're just only seeing the perspective of 70 mil. Does that make sense? So the smaller the sensor, the lower the focal length that you'll have to buy. Let's take the Sony A5100 because it's one of the most popular cameras for streamers. It has a crop sensor on it. In fact, let's take a look. It's got a crop sensor on it with a crop factor of 1.5, meaning if we wanted the 35 millimeter shot like this camera, we'd have to divide 35 by 1.5, which ends up being 24. A 24 millimeter lens on this will have the same perspective or field of view as a 35 mil there. It won't have as blurry of a background, but it'll have the same shot. However, if you remember from earlier in the video, we can get a heavier background blur by getting a lower aperture. This lens, the 24 to 70 is an f2.8. So if we can find a 24 millimeter that's maybe f2 or f1.4 and open it up even wider, we'll probably be able to get the same look on this camera. Let's jump on Amazon and let's see what we can find. All right, so I'm seeing a lot of really expensive lenses and there's a reason for this. A lot of these lenses are made for full frame sensors. In general, the larger the sensor, the more expensive the lenses are. So these will work for a crop sensor camera. However, you're gonna be paying a lot of extra dough. Also, a lot of these have a variable zoom. So the more moving parts you have inside a lens, the more expensive it gets. Let's see if we can find a prime 24 millimeter lens. Here's one, it's only F2.8. I'm not seeing a lot of 24, oh, here's one. Okay, 24 mil 1.4, $750. That's probably a little too pricey for your $400 camera. However, there is this one right here, the Sigma 30 mil F1.4. So it's gonna be a little bit more zoomed in, but that aperture opens up super wide. Just expect your shot to be a tiny bit more cropped than what we were looking at before. There's a clip on Twitter uh, from a streamer named KP that kind of blew up recently, and you can understand why. <laughs> but he's using this exact lens on this shot so you can see exactly what it's gonna look like. There are three main things you can do to save money on a lens without lowering the quality depending on what you need. One is prime lenses are generally cheaper. Two is finding a lens for the sensor size that you have. Don't get one for a larger sensor. It's just gonna be more expensive. And three uh, is one that I actually go with a lot. So my main 14 millimeter stream lens doesn't have autofocus on it. I don't actually use autofocus on either of my cameras. I prefer to set them manually. And that means there are absolutely zero electronics in this lens, which drove the price really far down. You can actually see most lenses will have little pins on the top right here where the lens communicates with the camera and figures out the autofocus. This one, 
has none of that. There are no electronics in this lens, which made it really cheap for what it does. Now that might not always be an option for you, or maybe you're filming with it or using it for photography and you'd like that autofocus, but it's important that you know, if you don't need autofocus, that can really save you a lot of money on a lens. If you wanna come and see what my lenses look like on stream, feel free to jump into my chat. Again, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, link in the description below. Also, if you wanna talk with a bajillion other streamers who a lot of them have different lenses, feel free to jump in the Discord. We have about 40,000 members in there. I'm sure a lot of you guys would love to share your ideas and your opinions on lenses and show off maybe what some of your cameras look like on stream. So link to the Discord in the description as well. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helped you pick out the lens, maybe save you some money. And as always, happy streaming. <laughs> Sorry, our arms look really tiny right <laughs> When you do that, it's good. When you do that, it's good. Ow. Ow. Ah. Well, it's a good stretch, though. Yeah.